everybody and thank you for possibility to tell you today about my situation and my job today. Um, first of all, I wanted to make presentation with a PowerPoint, but for reason uh, that the situation in my country is not sustainable now. You know that last time there is a big uh, change in the law of my country and I do not feel myself, uh, myself in safety. For this reason, I decided to not do presentation with the map, because nobody knows today what will be uh, announced as a state secret tomorrow. Um, so, I will be tell orally, and uh, I will be glad to answer your questions if you will be held. Um, first of all, I would like to tell that I was born and uh, live in a nuclear closed city, in the center of Russia, it's a Ural, Ural Mountains, it's not state secret, it's the broad between Asia and uh, Europe. And uh, uh, in a Chilabinsk region. Chilabinsk region is the region where uh, meteorites last year fall. It's exactly the center of our region, if, and we were lucky that it's uh, not fall in my city because it's only 70 kilometers. Um, uh, my Grandmother uh, died. Uh, my grandmother produced the uh, first plutonium for Soviet nuclear bomb. She was a nuclear engineer, and she died from cancer of lymph system seven years before my birth. My grand, uh, my father, uh, who was born in Sverdlovsk, it's also Euro. Uh, he was liquidator of first nuclear accident, which was secret and has a name as a Christian accident, which will happen in 1957. And I was usual child of closed city with a such a uh, narrow mind mentality. And when I graduated uh, university as a sociologist and politologist, one day my uh, friend from the local NGO, women NGO, offered me to come to environmental seminar. And I said, no, it's a green movement. They are against uh, nuclear plant. They are bought by Americans. And uh, I do not want to go there. But for personal reason, I uh, come there, and it was a milestone in my life because my mother also was a doctor of a nuclear uh, workers, and uh, many times at home in my childhood, I hear something about the radiation or something like this, and I felt the contradiction between the official position and the picture which I saw in my childhood. And from 1999, uh, I. Uh, created with my uh, friends, NGO, the Planet of Hopes, in the heart of uh, nuclear city, and we began to consolate people who suffered or who still are living in contamination zone uh, near our first uh, nuclear biggest plant, Maya. Um, short history about the uh, nuclear accident. Most of people in the world uh, as I know today, know about uh, know something about Chernobyl accident, about Fukushima accident, but uh, not so many people know that the first accident was happened in September 9, 29, in 1957 at Euro, where underground tank with the nuclear materials of higher level waste uh, were exploded and two uh, uh, 20 billion curie was, explo was exploded to atmosphere and the area of 23,000 square kilometers were contaminated. Another uh, uh, second uh, accident which will happen there, but uh, it is a not as an accident in one moment. It is a long-term accident pre year when the Mayak nuclear plant dumped uh, high-level nuclear waste to Tisha River, uh, and uh, it, uh, it does do it until today. We have a negotiation, they do or no, they say no, but we can do, they do. But uh, still, the teacher river is nuclear contaminated, um, and uh, if uh, for first years of this accident, uh, 34 villages were uh, destroyed and evacuated, still uh, people uh, in three villages are living in the uh, teacher river. And uh, still, I forgot to tell that still one village uh, uh, is not, after accident of 1957, 23 villages were evacuated and destroyed, and still one village uh, is there. And in 1967, there, were, uh, there was a further accident, it was a sandstorm. Uh, maybe you know that uh, there is a master um, 
duty is must contaminated place and road. It is a Lake Karachai where it contains uh, 12 Chernobyl activity. And uh, in 1967, this uh, zone were uh, dried and uh, during a strong wind, the dust up to atmosphere and uh, also big area was contaminated. Uh, but this information was a secret until beginning of 90 years. Uh, and only after the visit of first president Boris Yeltsin to a local village, the information began to be opened, and in 1993 we received the first law. It was a law about social defense for people who suffered from the nuclear contamination after dumping of nuclear waste at Tisha River and after the accident of 1957. And uh, today, um, I return to the situation of what we have today. Uh, today we have a situation when, uh, in most cases, we come to defense people who suffered on who still are living in contamination zone. For period from 2007 until 2010, we wrote must maybe 13 applications to European Court of Human Rights, and it was a complicated job together with the uh, European Human Rights Advocacy Center. Uh, with the lawyers who defended people uh, who won many cases in the European Court, and those the cases about um, people who come to prove their right to receive compensation or benefits for Russian law. It was a case of intrauterine liquidator. It is the people uh, who had mothers which were pregnant uh, during their clean-up job after the accident of 1957. It was a case of a girl, uh, and, and, uh, as, a, as a one example, who is older than 18 old, and so according to Russian law, only uh, kids who are the next generation, first generation, or second generation can receive benefits as a victim of uh, this accident only until age 18, and with the improvement of. Uh, Special counsel who proved that there is a link between the sicknesses and the uh, nuclear uh, accident. They come to receive after age 18, <coughs> and it was also our cases in the European Court. And this last case was a, uh, from the people who um, received a refusal from a local authority to receive compensation for their houses and nuclear contamination zone. Uh, near Tetra River, it's a famous village of Muslim village, which were moved in period 2005 to 2010. And uh, this year I was absolutely destroyed as a <coughs> law and human rights activist when we received the refusal of European Court, because it looks strange for me, many times European Court have found the violation of Article 8, Right for of, um, it's right for private life or article or protocol one. It's right for possession, but in these cases, European Court did not find any violation of rights. It's uh, I begin to I I, I want to make uh, my own investigation about this how it's possible it to uh, to make this information public because I see a little bit the work of nuclear lobby. Maybe it's my paranoia, but it looks so for me now and. Um, Another um, very important issue for us today it is the position of scientists. You know that uh, there are some uh, scientific institute in Russia, I know two of many of them, and the scientists from this institute from, for, for the supporting of foreign money, with American money, European money, some of them from Germany, uh, made a special research about health of people who were working or who are uh, next generation of nuclear workers, uh, people who were living in uh, contamination zone or who are still living there. And for their scientific conference, they make many reports about consequences. But when we ask them to go to our government and stay, say about consequences to prevent something uh, as a uh, building of new storages or something like this, they say, no consequences. Look at the official paper. You see? That for the last year, uh, only three persons from our region received such paper. How is it possible? What they are doing in their scientific conference, if they receive money for research, did report about consequences, 
but officially for people, no consequences. It's a big contradiction in my soul about their position, because I understand that they receive also yeah, state support, and they depend from state. But I don't understand how scientific uh, community can have patience, can have patience to look at this situation. And uh, then my third concern is the Techa River. You know that the Techa River, I told you before, that during three years, uh, Mayak dumped nuclear waste to the Techa River, and still this river is contaminated. But there is an area which is an uh, area of the nuclear plant, and there is another area which is an area of region. Of course, an area which is included to the uh, sanitary zone of a nuclear plant, it's closed area. But another area, the land is uh, near 200 kilometers, is open. And if you are going today now, you say, Nadia, you, are, uh, you, you tell a lot, because it is a resort. Look, clean water, nice forest, birds, frogs. But if you are going there with a dosimeter, you will see 1,000 micrometers per hour. It will be <laughs> get your content. So, um, Um, we still come to do something with the Techa River. The Techa River, according to our law, according to international law, still has no status. And for me, it was very sad to know, and I want to have a talk in this Mr. Walker, because um, there is a green cross in Chilapinsk, and last time we had a not very good situation and teacher river, then they have another gagger and say it's you know, it's not dangerous, we don't see the radiation there. Maybe we have a different uh, different equipment for uh, for searching for uh, this research. But I think that um, we can unite our activities, we can united our possibilities and isolate Techa River from environmental and people. Because, for example, last year, our Ministry of uh, Nuclear uh, Safety began to work. Uh, you can imagine course, and they put many, 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 many blocks as stones along the course. And now, it is a road along, along this course also. Big vehicle organized the station there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we would like to isolate the Chariva to put symbols of radiation and to move people from three villages which still are there. And uh, my conclusion is that uh, in Chilabinsk region we have the cases of third generation and uh, also fourth generation uh, in which uh, it's visible to look that there are consequences. And I'm ready to share with uh, you our information and uh, we are welcome your ideas. We need the help of hydrogeologists because we need to organize unique uh, constructor for the Techa River. It is a huge storage of <coughs> nuclear waste, 246 kilometers. Thank you for your attention and help. And help.